Hey, what's up everyone? So if you have a V6 Mustang 2005 to 2010, you're probably going to run into a leaking thermostat housing. So I found an aluminum thermostat housing online. As you can see, it's not plastic and it should hold up a lot better. Just to show you real quick, this seam that goes across the top goes all the way around. What that is, is plastic glued to plastic. Now that's usually where these things bust open at. And if it happens back here, it's pretty hard to find and you could be looking for that leak for a long time. Another place that that usually happens is right here where this upper thermostat housing sits. It'll get warped and that plastic will bend a little bit and it'll cause a gap right there. And that's what you saw at the beginning of this video where the fluid was sitting on top. Now what you want to do is you want to have this already assembled before you put it in the car. And what I mean is having the thermostat already in there and this already bolted on before you put this onto the engine. This O-ring is what goes at the bottom and what you're going to do is you're just going to put it in that little groove right there. Now when you go to put this on, I'll show you, you need to be careful because it can fall out and cause a leak. Usually I put some gasket maker along with this because this gets flattened out real easy. When you put the thermostat in, what you're going to do is you're going to put that spring facing down and that arch is going to be facing up. You drop it down in there and then you're going to take your thermostat seal, put it right in that groove. Make sure it fits all the way in there. And then next, you're going to take your paper gasket. This is for the metal ones. And you're going to put it right on there. And then you're going to take your upper thermostat housing and put it on. And you're going to bolt it on using these three bolts right here. And these are 10 millimeter bolts. So this o ring is going to be for the temperature sensor. And what it's going to do is it's going to go on this, which is the part that goes right in there. Now, there's a little tiny o-ring on there as you can see. If you see any cracks on there, if you see it's breaking or fraying anywhere, then you're going to want to go ahead and change that. Now what you can do is just get a screwdriver up under there and kind of work with it till you get it off. Should just come right off. Then you take the new one, just put it right on. So, the first thing you want to do is drain the fluid from your car, and that's going to be this little pet cock right here. And what you can use is a crescent wrench, or you could even use a 3 4 inch socket and you just turn it like so and you can loosen it the rest of the way by hand make sure you have something to catch the fluid in and open her up And to make it flow faster, you can go ahead and open this up. Alright, next when you come up here, what you want to do is you want to remove this clamp and this clamp here. And eventually move this hose right here. So this is a 5 16 socket. And you just pull them off. set this aside. Take off these wire connectors. Before you remove anything electrical, disconnect your negative end on your battery. Now for these, what you do is you pull this red tab forward, press the black tab that's behind there, and pull it off. Might have to wiggle it a little bit. Over here, there's another one. Same thing, you pull the red tab back, you press the black tab that's behind it, 
pull that one off. Now to get these bolts, there's two on the top and there's two down at the bottom. These are going to be 5 16 also. And this just slips right off. Now you're going to take off this upper hose. This clamp here is a 5 16 if you have the type that just clamps on with a pair of pliers, all you need is a pair of pliers. Just push that over here, out of the way, kind of tuck it back in there. So to remove the temperature sensor wires, what you're going to do is you're going to press in right here while you're pulling up. Just like that. And then you're going to take this heater hose off. To do that, you're going to take this clamp off down here. If you have a uh, clamp like this one, all you're going to need to do is get a pair of pliers, squeeze it right there and it'll unclamp. For this one here, take a socket wrench. When you have this clamp loosened, you can just bring it up, let it sit there. You're going to pull this hose straight up. And tuck it right behind that fuel line that's right there. To make it easier, you can take this off here and take this side off first. What you do, it's the same thing. You pull this tab back and down while you press this in. So you do this one first. Then do this one last. And what that does, it makes it easier to get to this bolt right back here. You can use a longer setup like this one, or you can use a shorter setup like this one. Now remove these three bolts. Loosen this clamp next. Next you pull this forward and you pull up this way so you can release this hose right here. So you want to clean the surface off before you put the new one in. And you can see the o-ring stayed behind on this one, it got stuck to all that RTV gasket maker. Now I usually put a paper towel in there so nothing drops in there. You don't want anything to fall into, uh, fall into the engine there. And you just scrape very gently. You don't want to gouge the surface because you could cause another leak that way. And you can use a razor blade, a uh, plastic scraper. I wouldn't recommend using any wire brushes or anything like that. If you don't have any gasket maker, 
or any RTV on here. You still need to clean this off. Get a little bit of brake cleaner or some uh, carb cleaner. Spray it on there. Or you could even spray some on a paper towel and soak it up real good and just kind of rub it around there. You want to clean off all that residue that's on there. Now I take out this temperature sensor. There's a little C-clip in there. You just get a flathead screwdriver. It pops right out. And you pull this straight out. There that is. You want to keep this for the new one that you put in. Now right here is what I was talking about earlier. See that little lip comes up right here? That's where the plastic warped and that's where the fluid was coming out. This whole piece right on top warped up. Created a little gap right there. That's where all the fluid came out right on top of here. This temperature sensor just goes straight in. And C-clip goes right in there. And you just push it in this way. And there it is. If you use RTV Gasket Maker, go ahead and put a little bit like that and follow the instructions on the label. To put this new one in, lay it on its side. Once you get it in there, turn it while you're going back. And you put that end into the hose. Once that sits in the hose, line it up and put your bolts in. If you're having trouble getting that hose to slip on, you can put a little bit of radiator hose grease on there. That'll help get it on and if you ever need to take this off again, hopefully not, it'll help to take it off. This little hose that's coming up from the water pump, now that can actually pull on your thermostat housing and you want to make sure that this is level back here. You want to make sure all those bolts are tightened down evenly. But once you get these bolts lined up and get them in, you want to tighten them down to about 89 inch pounds of torque. If you don't have a torque wrench, what you can do, just make sure everything's tight. You want this to sit flat. You don't want it to be angled. You don't want one or two bolts tighter than the other bolt. Next, tighten this hose clamp, and while you're doing that, you want to make sure that it's even all along the back, and you want to make sure that that hose comes up on the back of it. Sometimes it can kind of slide off towards the back. You want to make sure it's up all the way around, and make sure this is even and leveled out. Now when you put grease on any of these hoses, you're going to want just a little bit You go to put this hose back on. What you want to do, you want to take just a little bit right around that edge there. Make sure you get a thin, even coat. And you just press it on. Bring that clip down, tighten it up. When you go to put these back on, you don't want them to be all the way down to the edge. Lift them up just a little bit. That nipple actually comes up to about right here, so you've got a good grasp on it right here. You don't want to over tighten them because they could actually cut into the hose a little bit. You can see on this one, cuts in just a little bit right here. Uh, it can cause a leak. However, you don't want to have these too loose because that can cause a leak too. So tighten them up pretty tight. You can see in between these grooves here, if you're tightening it too much, you'll see that rubber start to come out of there where it's cutting it. You see that, just stop. But tighten this up pretty good. 
if you have any trouble with this, if you have any coolant in here or any water, anything got in there, what you can do is spray some WD-40 in there on both ends, let it dissipate a little bit and connect it back. If you don't want to use WD-40, you can get some electric cleaner, spray that in there, let it dry. Let's go ahead and connect this temperature sensor back up. It just pops right on top of there and snaps in. And put this hose back on. All you gotta do, line it up, and you push it straight in, and it'll snap on. There it is. And put this hose back on. I already got some grease in there, just a thin layer. And just slides right on. And take your clamp, clamp that on. A good way to see if these clamps are on tight enough, you pull on it and it doesn't move, then you got it on tight enough. Put the throttle back on. Torque these to 89 inch pounds. For these connectors, you just slide them on until they click and slide that red tab back. For the other side, the same thing, it slides on, snaps in, this red tab goes forward. When you put this intake hose back on, there's a little notch right here, a little tab and a little notch. It lines up right there. So when you put that back on, make sure those line up. You put this hose back on, it's the same as the others, it just snaps on. Now if you have any gasket maker or any RTV silicone, anything like that, you're going to want to let it dry and go by the directions on the package before you add water. When you're ready to add water, you want a 50-50 mix of coolant and distilled water. And before you add any water, go ahead, do a double check, make sure you have all your hoses, all your wires, make sure everything's connected back the way it was. Make sure you put your pet cock back in. Tighten it by hand. And that'll be tight enough. If you want to, take a crescent wrench, take a socket, tighten it just that much. That's all you need. And you just add that fluid. When you're adding fluid, add it to about right here. Leave the cap off and start your engine. Turn your heat all the way on. Make sure the fan's blowing. After this goes through a few cycles, go ahead and fill it up here. Put your cap back on. Go drive around. You don't want to wait too long because fluid can get hot and start coming out of here. Once you drive it around a little bit, you might have to add some more fluid. That's normal. It's just air bubbles coming out. If you have any questions, just comment. I'll try to answer them for you. I hope this helps you guys out.